So the next piece is of course to generate that model for our Twitter account. So we'll run Rails generate model and we'll give it the model name that we want to create, which is Twitter account. And we'll say user belongs to as our first field. This is gonna create a user ID field that's set to not um, null and it will be required. And that's going to make each Twitter account point to a user. And a user can have multiple Twitter accounts this way. So we can schedule tweets from any one of your connected Twitter accounts, which will be pretty handy. So um, the next piece is we want to store some information from the Twitter API. So we want to store the name of the Twitter account, the username of that Twitter account, and their avatar or image. And we want to keep track of their API token and secret. So we have our API key and secret for our Rails app to talk to Twitter. But now we're also going to have separate API tokens and secrets for each user. So those are combined and allow us to say, hey, Twitter, go make a post with our account and on this user's um, profile. So that is a combination of the two API tokens and secrets. And we'll get into that in just a little bit. So let's run Rails DB migrate to create that in our database. And as you can see, it generated our app models Twitter account. We can pull that up in our editor and that will be the model that it generates for us. So it's pretty straightforward. It says it belongs to user. Now we can go into the user model and do the opposite connection there and say has many Twitter accounts. And Rails will see this symbol and it will convert it to the same name right here, Twitter account.rb, and it will look for this class when you define that has many. So it's able to see this and convert that automatically to the matching model. And that allows you to say user.twitter accounts. So you can interact with the user's Twitter accounts. You can add new ones, you can delete them, you can update them and do all of that through the association. This is really useful because when you're logged into the website, we want to show only your Twitter accounts. So we can say current user Twitter accounts instead of loading all of them and uh, causing very bad security problems where you could post on anybody else's Twitter account that is connected, which would be bad. So this is a really crucial piece of our models uh, having that association. So um, what's neat about this is if we say user.last.twitter accounts, like I mentioned, this is going to load the user with the user.last, then it will grab that user, put it in memory as a variable, and then it will call Twitter accounts on it, which is going to query the Twitter accounts table using this SQL query. And it will automatically put the user ID of four inside of that. So it's automatically scoping our query for our uh, user. So it's not gonna grab any other users' Twitter accounts out of the database. We don't have any yet, and we need to go back to our OmniAuth callbacks controller to create our account here. So of course, the first thing we want to do here is say current user dot Twitter accounts dot create and we can pass in the options for what we want to save in the database. So current.user is going to grab us whoever's logged in. Then just like we did in the terminal with user.last, we can access the association of Twitter accounts and go query that table. But this is just referencing that table and we can call create to actually create a new record and it will automatically set the user ID for us. So we don't need to specify that here when we insert the record into the database because the association will automatically handle that. So the things that we need to set here are the name, we need the username, we need the image, and we need the token and their secret. So these are the fields that we want to assign as we go. And one of the things that uh, OmniAuth gives us is a uh, hash of all of the things that the API sent back. So we can define a method called auth that will help us grab that. So we'll say request.env omniauth.auth and this will actually give us the hash of credentials back from Twitter. 
So you don't have to worry too much about this. This is how Omnioth sets that up. It basically has a standardized way of grabbing the credentials from Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, GitHub, whatever you connect. Um, and you can interchangeably use this for any of those. So this is kind of a convenience method for us. So now we can say auth.info.name to access the name out of the Omnioth hash. And if you want, you can print out the Omnioth or this auth, the return value of that. You can just print out auth up here, rails.logger.info auth. And that will print that out in the Rails logs so you can see what that looks like. So we'll add that and we'll go fill out the rest of this. They call the uh, username nickname in Omnioth. And the other thing for image um, is in info, but then auth.credentials.token will give us our credentials and secret. So that is how we're going to create our um, Twitter account in the database. So let's try it now. We'll go back, we'll type slash auth, slash Twitter. We'll be redirected to Twitter. We'll be redirected back to our app. And then it's going to run our controller action. Now we get an error here because we didn't do anything yet. And we should probably redirect to the root path and say, a notice of successfully connected your account. So um, we do need some redirect, otherwise it's going to do that same head okay that we see it before. So we get this error, but if you actually look in here, this is the big old Omnioth hash that they give us. So we get all kinds of information about this. We get um, the user's profile images and tokens and uh, whatever other things from the Twitter account. So you can poke around that and add any other things that you would like to save. So now we can go back to our app and let's go into our database because we should have created a Twitter account. So let's say user.last.twitter accounts and there we go, we get a record here. And if we grab the first one, we'll get our Twitter account that we just connected. Now let's go ahead and destroy this and walk through the process again. So we'll go through auth Twitter and it will create our account and redirect us back to the home page. So now we have that Twitter account all wired up. But there is the situation where you might do this when you already have your Twitter account connected and that is okay but what it's gonna do is actually create a duplicate record in our database. So we'll say user.last.twitteraccounts and we can say .count to see how many we have. We have two and we can even uh, print these out. So twitteraccounts.all and we'll see that we have the username exit three and the username exit three in the other um, object. And these, this is where the two are separated. So we have duplicates now, and we don't really want to store duplicates of these. So let's take the last one, delete it, and go fix our controller action here to look up if we already have it. And if we do, we can update it. And if we don't have it already, we'll just create it. So the way that we'll do this is we'll change this around just a little bit. So we'll say Twitter account equals, instead of doing a create, we will say, where the username is auth.info.nickname, we will first or initialize. So what this will do is query our database and say, hey, do you have a record with this username? And if you do, give me the first one with that username. Otherwise, give me a new Twitter account with that username assigned. And so we can take the Twitter account that we get back from that and we can update it with the name, the image, the token, and the secret. So this is going to allow us to um, update existing records if we already have our Twitter account connected. And if we don't, it's going to create a new one. So it's going to seamlessly check our database and make sure we only have one record for that username. The other thing we can do here is we can add a validates 
username uh, uniqueness is true. And that's going to prevent us from creating a record with two uh, duplicate usernames. So it'll make sure that it is unique to the username on the Twitter account. Um, and that is going to take care of everything we need here. So now we're gonna have that all set up correctly. So now if we go back to the browser and we say auth Twitter, it will all work. And we should still have user.last.twitteraccounts.count just a single record. And we can hit that URL as many times as we want and we shouldn't be creating any new records. We'll see that count is still one and you'll see when you read the logs that uh, it did not insert any new records. The only time it inserted the new record was when we created it the very first time. So that is where our insert into was done for the first time. And on the subsequent times, you'll see that it checks to see if a Twitter account with this username of exit3 exists or not.